Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tiro, and today I wanted to invite you along as I explore the world of the Everyday Witch. So the Everyday Witch Tarot has been a deck that's been around for a really long time, and it's one that I've always said I, I don't need. Like, it just doesn't need to be a part of my collection because I have the Green Witch Tarot, which is also by Llewellyn. And this is like one of my tried and true soul decks. I use it for all kinds of things. And it's really like the main sort of witchy deck in my collection. It's the one that I go to all the time, the one that I use for all kinds of different readings. And I really thought that this, this was it. This is all I really need. I don't need another witchy deck in my collection, although I do have some others. Maybe because they have a similar kind of art style, maybe because they are by the same publisher, I was always like, I don't need the Everyday Witch because I have the Green Witch and I love it and it's one of my favorites. So when I was um, chatting with the people at Llewellyn and then we were talking about the decks that they were going to send me to share with you on my channel, I had mentioned witchy decks. Now I never actually mentioned the Everyday Witch decks because I've always been like, I don't need them. They're not my cup of tea and I just don't feel like I need them in my collection because again, I have my Green Witch and I'm happy with that. But these were in the box of decks that Llewellyn sent to me and at first I was like, oh, it's the Everyday Witch. But then I thought maybe this is the universe trying to tell me that I need this deck. So these decks actually arrived a couple months ago. And since then, I've actually been watching other videos showcasing these decks, talking about people using them. I know that the Everyday Witch Tarot is a deck that is like, it's like a tried or true ride and die deck for a lot of people. Like the way I feel about my Green Witch Tarot is a way is the way a lot of people feel about their Everyday Witch Tarot. So I wanted to really take some time to get to know these decks and explore them. I'm going to take a look at the Everyday Witch Tarot first because it's kind of the one that's been around the longest. Um, but we will also take a look at the Everyday Witch Oracle, which is a newer release from Llewellyn. I think it came out um, yeah, since 2019, so just a couple years ago. We'll take a look at that here in a little bit because I do want to kind of see how these decks work together. But what I'm really curious to do is to kind of really, now that I have this deck in my hand, to really look at this artwork. Because in my mind, this deck has always been a direct competitor with this deck. But now I have watched several videos with several people who have both of these decks and say they're totally different decks, right? They don't even, even though they're both kind of witchy decks, they don't really fill the same space or occupy the same space in people's collections. So I was curious to check it out myself. So in case you are unfamiliar, it does come in one of these big magnetic closure boxes, which does fit the deck in here and it has the little ribbon so you can easily get it out and the book fits on top. Now this is a really nice setup if you like to keep your deck and book all together, but I will probably be making a bag because that's how I like to keep mine and my guidebooks on the bookshelf. So this guidebook is one of the, um, you know, beautiful Llewellyn books with the bigger full color images. It doesn't have the large full size page images that we see in some of their newer decks, but this deck has been around for quite some time. So the deck is created by Deborah Blake and illustrated by Elizabeth Alba. And of course, uh, published by Llewellyn Publishing. This is the sixth printing from 2020. So it looks like maybe it was originally published in 2017. I thought it'd been around a lot longer than that, but maybe I was mistaken. Um, beautiful guidebook. I really am excited to kind of dive into that here in a moment because the guidebook is important to me. I do really like to look at guidebooks. Just glancing through, I love that we have some kind of key phrases and um, things to, to take a look at here. I really like when guidebooks do that. So we're going to put this one on hold. I'm not going to do kind of my traditional like deck showcase kind of a thing here with a full walkthrough or anything like that, because I really want to spend some time just really looking at these images and talking about these images. So before we really jump into these cards, one of the things that um, I noticed in watching flip throughs and that other people have mentioned in their videos is that there is kind of a mix of modern and um, kind of this old style, medieval style artwork. 
um, or imagery. And I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about that because I know that throws a couple of other people off. But let's just go through. I'm going to just kind of flip through the deck and we're going to we're going to chat about it. Um, I think this fool is, is pretty cute. I love that she's got the broom. Um, I believe the cat does feature in all of the cards. We do have the cat on the back. Truth be told, I'm not really a huge cat person. I have dogs <laughs> um, and birds, but um, I do like the the little use of the cat. It just reminds me of kind of the idea of the witch is familiar. Again, this looks kind of modern, but then we have this kind of old school looking sailboat. So um, her boots, though, look very modern. So again, kind of that mix of modern and um, medieval. So here we have the magician. I mean, a very traditional kind of imagery here. This is very much a Rider Waite Smith type of deck. I do like that he has all of the elements here and that um, they have the kind of magic wrapped around their hands. It's really cool. I do like this High Priestess card where we have the tarot here, the crystal ball, the runes here, and all the books behind her. We have the black and white candles representing the pillars. I, I do think that's quite cool. So here we have our Empress. We do have a dog included. She is a pregnant Empress. I don't know that I guess necessarily get a really witchy vibe out of her, but I think she's pretty cool. So here we have our Emperor. Again, we have a beautiful dog. I do quite like that. He has the cat in his lap and he does look a little bit older. I generally like my Empress and Emperor to be a pair, but he looks quite a bit older than her. So I'm not sure that that really works in terms of having them be a pair. So here's an example of a card that feels very, very modern to me, whereas these kind of feel a bit more medieval. So we have, I don't know, she's kind of a mix of medieval modern. I feel like her boots are kind of more modern, her leggings more modern, but this sailboat down here looks a little bit more medieval. This definitely looks more medieval to me. Um, I guess she could go either way. The Empress definitely looks medieval and the Emperor definitely looks medieval. And then we have this kind of shift to this more modern take on the Hierophant. But I really like the concept behind this Hierophant card. I love the idea that they're sitting in meditation. We definitely have this guru type of image. So we have a teacher not necessarily um, tapping into like dogmatic tradition as we tend to see in our traditional cards, but more of this idea of, of a kind of spiritual or enlightened teacher. And I do really like that. Here we have our lover's card, which is, you know, quite nice and cute. Here again is another card that's a bit modern, uh, like a little too modern for my taste, I think. This is one of the cards in the deck that I'm like, mm, it doesn't it doesn't really thrill me. I get the concept and the idea, but it's, it's definitely not my favorite. I do quite like the strength card. I feel a little bit like Wizard of Oz energy going on here. And I don't know if it's just because it's the tornado in the background and, you know, we've got the witch with the little shoes and the stripy socks. Like, it's just feeling a little bit Wizard of Oz, but I do like that the lion is like licking her hand. Like they're obviously friends. She's not trying to overpower him in any way. And I do quite like that idea for the card. Love this hermit card with the idea of her going into the forest. We have the little um, fire here. We're, you know, communing with nature, that kind of retreating within. I do think that's quite beautiful. Here's another card that is really not my favorite, this Wheel of Fortune card. I don't know. It kind of feels like an afterthought. I feel like you could have, there could have been something more done with this that was a little bit more in integrating that kind of natural um, connection or seasonal connection or even the wheel of the year that we tend to associate with witches. I think that would have been a little bit more appropriate. Justice is an interesting card. I definitely don't get any sort of witchy vibe off of this, but I think the concept is nice. I like the black and white cat sitting on the scales. That's pretty cool. Hanged man again, very traditional. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the hanged man being all bound up because I don't see the hanged man as being forced surrender. I see it as being willing surrender. And so that's just, again, my personal interpretation. But I do quite like that we have the um, broom kind of up here serving as part of the tree. And that's what the hanged man is suspended from, which is kind of cool. He does have the key in his hand, but that would be really hard to like unlock this one. So I don't know, he could hand the key over, but again, that's kind of like abdicating your power to someone else. And I'm not sure how I feel about that either. Interesting death card. Um, the face kind of creeps me out. Just be perfectly honest about that. But I do think it's interesting. We're here, we're cutting the, the energetic cords of life, which is an interesting take on death. 
Again, this temperance card, super, super modern. I'm not sure, like, she's got one eye closed, one eye opened. On here, on this side, we have, like, all the cupcakes, and on this side, we have, like, the carrots and the, the healthier things for you. Here we have, like, cupcakes and a martini. So kind of balancing between those um, healthy choices and not so healthy choices, which I do think is an interesting card for temperance. But again, very modern in its depiction. So here we have the devil, which is definitely a kind of creepy card in this deck. You know, definitely tying into that more traditional imagery of, of being tempted into something that's maybe not so great for you. I do quite like this tower card, but again, that switch between the modern and the not so modern. But look at the tower. I love that all the rubble's around it, but it still has a stable base, and I love to see that in my tower cards. Beautiful star. I don't know that I get so much of a witchy vibe out of her. It's more of like a goddess vibe, but I think she's really cool, and I love all the rainbow colors. This moon card is pretty awesome. I, I think this is one of my favorite cards in the deck. I love that we just have the witch kind of on the moon back here, silhouetted by the moon. But what I really love is the cats here. So we have the um, kind of domesticated feline here on top and the wild cat reflected in the water. I think that is super cool. Probably one of my favorite cards. Here we have the Sun card, which to me kind of looks a little bit like a Three of Cups card, but I could totally see that. I love all the sunflowers, and I do think it's a great depiction. This Judgment card is another one that kind of throws me. I really want to look up in the guidebook and see like what the deal is with this Judgment card because I I don't quite get it. I'll just be perfectly honest. It's cute, but I don't I don't get it for Judgment, so I'll definitely have to work that look that one up. Here's our world card, again, bringing way back into that modern sense. I'm, you know, not sure how I feel about that. It's, to me, again, doesn't speak to kind of the world energy. It just, it feels more of like a nine of pentacles kind of card, maybe a nine of cups kind of card, more about like contentment, not being at one with the world, which is kind of how I see the world card. So here we're moving into our swords. I do quite like this Ace of Swords. She's definitely like taking hold of the sword. She's in her own power. And I think that's quite cool. I'm just wondering, are the capes the same? That would have been cool because she has this cape here and this cape here is the same. So I'm wondering if it's the same person. Interesting depiction for the Two of Swords. I do quite like that. Kind of the idea of, of kind of just trusting your inner voice in order to make your decisions for you, in order to know where to throw it. That's kind of cool. This Three of Swords is interesting because while we have the tie-in to the Rider Waite Smith here with the heart with the three swords in it, it kind of looks like a candy box. So like it's not a real heart. Um, and it looks like a box of candy over here. But I do love that we have the journal and the ink and quill with the ink spilled on the bed here, which to me really does tie into the sword energy of being um, the suit of the mind, which I think is really cool. Here's our four of swords. I love that she's at rest. However, we see cobwebs here. So maybe this is a reminder not to stay in that time of rest too long. This Five of Swords is quite interesting. We have all the swords kind of coming around. And rather than it being kind of like a communal card, we definitely see that some of these um, little witches here are not happy about whatever is going on. So I think that does speak well to the Five of Swords energy, that, that disruptive energy. Here's our Six of Swords. And just moving on, definitely get that idea of that flow with that um, kind of wind pouring through here. Here's our Seven of Swords with our sort of traditional thiefy energy, which again is not really how I read the Seven of Swords, but this is a common depiction. So I am perfectly fine with working my way around that and reading it in a way that works for me. You know, is she stealing the swords? Is she putting the swords back? We don't really know. And that's kind of, I think, what the underlying thing of the Seven of Swords is, is we don't really know what's going on here, right? We need to not jump to conclusions. This Eight of Swords is quite lovely. She does have all of these swords around her and she is bound, but we can see she's not super tightly bound and it almost looks like she's holding the bindings. So she just lets go, like she could get out of that. And I think that's really cool. So here's our Nine of Swords. Again, pretty traditional imagery in that we have the bed with the, the sword, Nine Swords above her head. But what I like about this is she's not like in bed she's just sitting on the bed and she has all these books around her and maybe she's just overwhelmed by what she's been reading like she's just overwhelmed by the amount of information that she's taking in so i think that's a really cool interpretation of the nine of swords so here we have our ten again very traditional with the ten swords in the back however this figure i like that for one there's no blood because i do not read the tens that way 
And two, that she is very much still alive and she's reaching for her broom here. So this idea that she's going to grab her broom and she's going to pull herself up. And I do think that's quite cool. Here's our page of swords. I do love that I'm seeing the kind of same pattern throughout the sword suit. Not all of them, but some of them have that, which is quite lovely. Knight of Swords, very Harry Potter looking. Our Queen of Swords, I do quite like her. I love that her throne is kind of like jaggedy and sword looking or maybe kind of a little bit icy looking. I think that works really well for her. She does look like maybe she might be a little bit older. I mean, she has a fairly young face, but she has kind of grayish hair. I do like to see some age diversity in my decks as well as um, cultural diversity too. Um, I do like this King of Swords. He definitely looks like he is like master of all that he has learned, right? He's master of his mind, and I think that's really cool. He does also look a bit older, too. So here's our Ace of Cups. I do quite like that. I love the cauldron down here. It's idea of the cup overflowing. So again, back to our modern. Like, this feels more medieval, more kind of along the lines of green witchery, and then this feels very much like a more modern take on you know, on the witch idea, which is totally cool, but I kind of wish like it would pick a lane. <laughs> um, so here's our three of cups, which I think is very traditional. Again, also very modern looking and I do quite like it, but when we compare it to like, you know, the kind of medieval look of the ace of cups here, it's a little bit jarring to me. I'm really curious to see though how it works in a reading because I'm going through and being really nitpicky here with what these cards are, you know, what I'm seeing in them and, and how I'm kind of my first impression of them is. So here we have our Four of Cups. Again, he looks kind of not so much bored as maybe just unsure about what it is that he needs to do right now with all of these cups. And, and I can get on board with that. Again, here's our Five of Cups with, again, another really modern take. So this, again, looks a little bit more medieval. And then we're back to modern because we definitely have some modern things going on here and balloons and... I don't get the balloons, but that's just me. And again, we're back to medieval with our six of cups. Maybe it's just the way that I'm perceiving it, but it just, it feels like it's a weird, a weird mix of um, time periods. Um, here's our seven of cups. You know, definitely get that idea of choice. I do quite like this eight of cups with the idea of walking away. I am definitely more drawn to the cards that are a bit more medieval, less, um, modern or a little bit more green witchy type, a little bit more entrenched into the natural aspect of magic. But that's again just my personal preference. I like this Nine of Cup with the um, Sand Castle Tower. I think that's really cool. Kind of traditional looking Ten of Cups card here with the happy witchy family, but again, we are looking at a very medieval style imagery. This Page of Cups with his little painting is really cute. Again, our Knight of Cups. I love the shark beneath him. That's just that's just kind of funny to me. Of all the bubbles, our hearts coming out. There's our Queen of Cups. I think she is quite beautiful. Are all of our queens pregnant? I didn't notice. Um, I definitely noticed that she is. But I love this idea of, you know, she's got the shell and she's um, being, she feels like she's very much connected to this water energy here. I love the dolphins in the background. And here is our King. They do feel like they could be a matching pair, which I do definitely like to see, similar to like my empress and emperors. I like to see my kings and queens looking like they belong together. So here we have our Ace of Wands, which is a quite a powerful little card, and I do really like this idea of kind of, she's, you know, manifesting all of this. This is what she wants to create through her journey through the wands. I think that's really cool. So our Two of Wands. Love the little salamander there down climbing up the wall, tying into that wands energy. Ooh, there he is again. I wonder if he's in all of them. That would be cool. I don't think he is. Um, so our three of wands. I love this idea of kind of directing your energy. I think that's pretty cool. Four of wands. We have the four cats in play as well. Don't see the salamander again, but um, here we have our five of wands and we look like we have a bunch of witches who cannot decide what needs to go into this cauldron, um, which I th definitely think speaks to the disharmony of the five. So here we have our six of wands. She's handing out the roses. Everybody's celebrating whatever it is that she is doing. That's kind of cool. I do like the seven of wands. You know, she definitely feels like she's standing her ground for what she believes in. I think that's really cool. 
Eight of Wands, again, I feel like we're kind of tapping into that Wizard of Oz energy, but I think it's because we have the witch with the hat and the tornado in the background. But this is a really interesting take on the Eight of Wands because she doesn't look like the look on her face is like, it doesn't look like she's really enjoying this experience. It feels a little bit more disruptive, a little bit more like a five energy, whereas I tend to see the eights is either really, really stable or kind of like a stagnation because you have the four is a stable energy. You have four plus four that gives us really stable energy, which sometimes can be a little bit stagnant. This does not feel stagnant. This definitely feels like motion, but it feels like it's motion that's kind of tumbled out of control for her. So that's really interesting. So here's our nine of wands. We definitely look like she's been through the battle, right? She's she's conquered all of these other wizards or witches. Here's our ten of wands. Definitely feeling that kind of burden card. She's got this heavy load that she's carrying, but she's still going. She's still moving on. So I love that. Here's our page. There's our little salamander friend again. Our knight. I do like that our knights are all kind of flying on brooms. Here we have the dragon. That's kind of awesome. Our queen of wands. She's actually sitting on the dragon. The dragon is her throne, which is kind of cool. And our king. Again, they do look like they could be a nice little pair together. He looks like he's planning world domination. So now let's move into our pentacles, which is my favorite suit and the one I tend to be the most <laughs> picky about. Um, I do quite like this ace of pentacles though. She definitely feels like she's taking hold of it. Here we have our two. I love the lemon skate here, pulling it all together. Your three, definitely get that idea of collaboration, right? They're all working together to create this painting. Here's our four, and we definitely get that idea of kind of that hoarder, miser energy in this particular card. But, you know, the window's open, so maybe he's just kind of collecting his resources and he's just waiting out till he needs to make use of them. But he does kind of look like he's like a troll sitting on his hoard, right? <laughs> so here's our five of pentacles. Um, I love that we kind of have this nod to the traditional RWS with the pentacles in the stained glass window. I think that's pretty cool. Definitely get that idea of kind of desolation, that disruptive energy to the five. Here's our six. And again, tying very closely into that idea of um, charity that we often see through the Rider Waite Smith Six of Pentacles. But, you know, it works. I love this seven of pentacles. Um, and again, this is why I was like, I, I don't need this deck because I have the green witch because I, these are the cards that I tend to like, the ones that are very um, kind of green witchery or in nature. So I love the seven of pentacles. I love all the, the pentacles being on the grapevine and she's like waiting for them to create. We have a glass of wine here. We have our book. Like she's patiently waiting for those things to come to fruition and that's beautiful. I do love this eight where we have the um, little witch kind of putting all of her concoctions together to create something. Gorgeous nine of pentacles. Definitely get that idea of being at home with who you are and what you've created and I love that. So here we have our Ten of Pentacles with our happy little family. A little Page of Pentacles. I like that he's got his map. It's a little cat with a turned over bag of coin. Interesting. Here's our knight. He's got his pentacle and he's going off into his adventure. And here's the Queen of Pentacles. And I always, always look to her. Again, she looks like she's maybe meant to be older, but she has a very young face. But I can, I can work with that. She definitely has that idea of abundance and affluence about her. And here is our king. I think he's quite lovely too. I like that we have the grapes in both of these cards. Okay, so I was just curious. So I've divided the deck up into cards that have a medieval feel to me, like in terms of either their clothing, which was primarily what I was looking at, um, as well as kind of the landscape and the... Um, environment that they're in so like we have a dungeon here and we have what looks like you know the king's room um I that one I suppose could go either way but her outfit feels kind of medieval to me um and it just like the that's the majority of the deck to me feels like it has kind of a medieval um witch vibe to it right these are these feel like medieval witches 
and for the most part like there are some of them that maybe could go either way um, I did pull out a handful that I'm like these really could go either way I mean I think this has a very medieval feel to it but I mean we there are a few things in here that might lend itself to more of a modern look but I think it could go probably lean more this way this one I feel like could go either way too that could be more modern or uh, medieval I just can't really tell with her dress but I could totally fit it into the medieval side this again is one that it's really her boots that maybe look a little bit more modern but she could totally be med medieval this one I think could go either way um, again, this one I think could go either way. She looks more like a goddess to me. You know, this one I think could probably go either way. She doesn't look terribly medieval, but she doesn't look terribly modern either. And this one, again, same thing. Um, there are some aspects that are a little bit more modern, but some aspects that are a little bit more medieval. So the majority of the deck, like the majority of the deck has a sort of medieval style feel to it. Um, and I'm just using that for lack of a better term in terms of like their outfits, right? and the environments that they're in and I feel like that that works I like that so it does feel even though it feels a bit more medieval it does feel different than the green witch tarot the green witch tarot feels more like it takes place in more um like maybe a um, Irish or Celtic world um than you know maybe like a medieval England type of thing um this is just yeah, I, I could totally be totally wrong with all of my impressions, but that's just the, the vibe that I'm getting off of them. So they do feel quite different, even though I feel like these kind of have a more similar energy to them, as in they do feel a little bit more like uh, stepping into that old school witchery type of world. But then we have this handful of cards that's like totally modern. Um, we have like streamers here and balloons. And here it's her dress looks very modern. Um, I suppose it could be more of a medieval dress and maybe just torn, but to me it looks modern. Again, with the balloons. If you were to take some of these elements out, I think they would fit really well into the medieval category. Um, again, this one could probably go either way, but their dresses look quite modern to me. Maybe it's just because of the way this dress is depicted here. Again, this is very modern looking. Um, he just looks kind of modern looking in terms of his clothing, but he could probably squeeze his way over there. This is definitely modern looking because he looks like he's wearing jeans. So that one I can't really work my way around. Um, this one feels very modern just because of the house and, you know, we have the kind of tropical drink here um, again this one it feels like it doesn't feel medieval it's not really quite modern I don't really know what to do with this one this card totally confounds me just to be perfectly honest um, this is super modern this is m totally modern because of the whole wheel thing again if it had been more of like a wheel of the year I think it could have gone more into the modern category or medieval category motorcycle totally modern and yeah this looks like you know a modern day yoga studio so this is this is my my real not really issue but this is my kind of confusion with this deck and one of the reasons why i didn't get it for so long is because the majority the majority of the deck feels very cohesive and like it belongs together and these few cards just feel like they're weirdly modern and out of place and so for the everyday witch tarot which to me feels like it has more of a modern sense about it um, again having not read the guidebook or anything this is just going off my first impressions I feel like it has a bit more of a modern take to it and so I feel like the majority of the deck probably should have been in this type of style where we have a more modern style witchery going on here um, which would be kind of like everyday witch as in everyday in our modern sense of the word but this is all like super medieval looking like some of this is like this is like castles and he's in a cloak and you know really cool and I really do quite like this art style and this um kind of medieval witchy depiction but it's just weird that a couple of the cards are super modern and don't really feel like they fit in here but having said that I do really like the majority of the deck and it does feel like it is very different from the Green Witch. So let's go ahead and give it a shuffle because now I'm kind of curious how it reads. Whoops. That was a poor shuffle. <laughs> um, like all Llewellyn decks, it shuffles beautifully. 
I really like Llewellyn cardstock. Um, this is a bit of their more shinier. Can I get it to catch my lights? There it goes. It's a bit more of a shinier cardstock, but um, it shuffles beautifully. Okay, so let's just pull a couple cards because now I'm kind of curious. We got the Emperor, the Ace of Wands, and the Three of Swords. So again, those all look super medieval to me, which I do, I do quite like. And I think that works really well. So let's go ahead and let's pull the Emperor out of the guidebook. Just want to see what he says. So the Emperor, lead and others will follow. Strength lies not in might, but in experience and the wisdom that comes from it. So it talks a little bit about what we see in the artwork, which is really nice. I do quite like that. He's a true king, wise and experienced. He nurtures those around him. Um, then it talks about, you know, kind of what to consider when this card comes up. He often represents a strong male figure, someone you can depend on. Well, that's not really how I see the emperor, but I mean, that totally does work. Here's our ace of wands. Take the energy and run with it. What did our emperor say? Lead and everyone will follow. Great. Lead and others will follow. So lead and others will follow. Take that energy, which you're leading, and run with it. Sometimes the universe gives you a boost. Don't miss an opportunity when it comes along filled with potential. It says, oh, my achy, breaky heart. Oh, that makes me sad. Um, sometimes heartbreak is unavoidable. At least you can do is learn from it. So definitely speaking to that Rider Waite Smith idea of the Three of Swords as the card of heartbreak, which is not at all how I see it but I can work my way around it because I do love that we have this whole book and pen and quill thing going on here. And I can kind of not really focus in too much on the whole heart aspect because I do not read the Three of Swords as a heartbreak. To me, that is the Five of Cups, not the Three of Swords. I do like the way that these all kind of work together. I feel like, I feel like it's got a, a really good energy. And I'm just curious if I like pull some more cards. How often are those handful of modern cards gonna come up in this deck? Again, all feeling very medieval. I love that. I love when they're borderless and I can put them together and make a picture. So let's pull a few more. Again, still feeling that medieval vibe. Okay, there's one of the ones that feels a bit more modern only because of the balloons, but I think that's, that is um, enough of other elements with the castle and, you know, their dress that maybe they, you know, I can kind of ignore the balloon thing going on in the background and just really let that kind of speak to me in terms of being more of, you know, focusing on, on the central part of the imagery. It does feel very cohesive when you're just, you know, kind of working with it and laying cards out. Like I haven't even, there's one of the ones that I pulled out as being more modern. So it does still feel like it fits in really well. So that's really the only one that has a super modern vibe to me. And it does feel like it works really well with this. With the rest of the cards in the deck. There's that chariot. That's one that really has a very modern, very modern take to it. But again, laying it down here with all these other cards that have a much more kind of medieval look to them, it really doesn't feel that out of place, which is really surprising to me. I was really expecting it to be super jarring when I got one of those handful of super modern cards. And I have to say, I'm kind of digging it. <laughs> I am kind of digging it. So maybe this is one of those decks that I was like, oh no, I don't need it. I don't need it. I have my Green Witch and, and I love it, which is still very true. I have my Green Witch and I love it and nothing will ever replace it. But I do feel like this has a, a enough of a unique energy and enough of a unique um, vibe to it that I feel like it definitely could have its own place in my collection. And I'm quite excited about that. Cause I see this deck everywhere and, and I know everybody loves it. And I was always like, I, I don't get it. 
I don't get it. But when you when you go through the deck card by card and you really are like looking to pick out those modern elements versus those medieval elements, they really, really stand out. But when you mix it all together and you're just working with this deck, I really didn't find that the these modern type of cards, this one I think is kind of like the worst offender is in terms of being super modern. It really doesn't stand out that much in a reading. It's really not that off-putting that I thought it was going to be. But the rest of the deck feels very cohesive. It's just a few weird, kind of weirdly modern cards, but the rest of the deck feels very much cohesive and I do quite like the style of it. And I am pleasantly surprised. So this is probably gonna be a really long video and I just apologize ahead of time, but I do wanna take a look at the Everyday Witch Oracle because now I'm super curious, super curious as to how these are going to feel. Um, it comes in this nice little deck size box. We have a little guidebook here. Again, I'm not doing like a full walkthrough of these. There are many, many walkthroughs online and um, I just really kind of want to see, see how they look. <laughs> I'm just really curious. So here we have Connect with Gaia. I do quite love this imagery. It's beautiful. Now I'm really looking at it. Is it modern or is it medieval so maybe we'll make piles as we go hibernation and regeneration it's beautiful she's in the cave again we're, we're seeing the cat meditation to dig deep I quite like that this one has a puppy I love the little mushrooms again still feels medieval I'm loving this ground and center that's beautiful isn't it I love that I'll have all the energy swirling around him Earth magic. Again, she looks like maybe she might be meant to be a little bit older. Um, her face looks quite young, so maybe she could just be a young person with white hair, but I would love the idea if she were a bit older. So here's planting the seeds. I mean, this one could have a bit of a more modern take, but it, it does feel enough like the rest of these cards that I do think it goes well. Strength and resilience. Oh, that's beautiful. I love the wind sweeping through. Affirmation for growth. I love the body diversity that I'm seeing in this one as well. It's quite lovely. Prosperity and abundance. Beautiful. Again, this one has a much more modern feel to it, but I feel like because she's so encased in nature that it does still work. It feels cohesive. Um, same here with the seasonal harvest card. She feels very modern. However, I feel like you know she's em embraced by nature and so I feel like it does really fit. Imagine and envision. Again, very modern feel, but I love that it's like her sketchbook because that, that just makes me think of Ash. Listening to wisdom. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Meditation for clarity. Again, very modern feel, but it doesn't feel out of place, which is quite interesting. Gratitude and thanks. Air magic. Learn from life. I know I said I wasn't gonna do a flip through, but this is my first time looking at this deck. So I do wanna kind of just look through it and you're going along for the ride with me. Prayers and wishes, that's cute. Affirmation for acceptance. It's a tornado. Speak your mind, it's beautiful. Transformation and change. Again, that feels very modern as well, but it doesn't feel out of place, which is really interesting to me. Sun and stars, accept love, meditation for creativity, that's pretty cool. Inspiration and courage, looks like we're trying to have some age diversity, that's pretty cool. Fire magic, again very modern looking, but I think it works. Look at this little lizard coming out of the fire, that's really cool. Give in to passion, beautiful. Follow your dreams. Affirmation for healing the heart. Give love. I totally forgot I was gonna make a pile of modern and medieval, but it's, it really doesn't feel like it's jarring at all, so I'm not even noticing. Joy and delight. Healing waters. Cleansing body and spirit. I like that one. And the mama's cleaning the baby down there. That's cute. 
<laughs> Meditation for Peace and Serenity. That's just kind of a funny little card. I mean, I kind of dig it, but it kind of makes me laugh. Change in Progress. Water Magic. I do like that we have magic cards for each of the elements. That's pretty cool. Make a Move. Go with the flow. Oh, she looks very content, doesn't she? Very peaceful. Affirmation for positive change. Oh, I like that. She has gotten rid of her dress and she's going to become a pirate. That's awesome. Or ship's captain. Whatever. <laughs> Tears of joy and sadness. Oh. Even the cat has the reflection. Joy and sadness. That's quite nice. Rebirth and reinvention. Oh, that's beautiful. I like that. Look at all the turtles going out to sea. Gorgeous. Okay, so I, I'm pleasantly, pleasantly surprised by that. I really thought there was going to be like some um, inconsistencies there because, of course, some of these are really modern and some of them are not. But again, just like the tarot deck, like it kind, it kind of works. It kind of surprises me, but it kind of works. So yeah, I'm kind of digging, kind of digging this. Okay, so you know now I have to do a, you know, my traditional three card pull with my oracle in the center. Um, these are again, your kind of standard Llewellyn cardstock. They are oracle size, so they're quite a bit larger. They shuffle really nicely. I quite like the way Llewellyn cardstock shuffles. Okay, so let's, let's give these one shuffle because I don't remember what I was doing with them last. Okay, this is gonna be a super long video. I mean, the backs are cute together. <laughs> that's, always, that's always fun. So what did we get? Oh, tears of joy and sadness. And let's pull our cards around it. So we have temperance. Okay, so super, super modern card with a medieval looking card and another medieval looking card. So what do we think? It's a little jarring when I see it like this, but I think it, it does still work. Now I'm kind of curious what the guidebook says for the um, Everyday Witch Oracle. So it looks like we do have a kind of a structure to this Oracle deck, which I do appreciate. We have um, the Earth cards for grounding and practical action. Those were things like the meditation to dig deep and the Earth magic. We have air for thought and communication. We have fire for creativity and passion and water for change and movement. So I do like that we have the kind of elemental suits in this Oracle. That's really cool. Okay, so it says life is rarely simple. There's no such thing as completely good or bad. And even the best outcomes may come with a price. And even the worst disasters can offer a silver lining. Really interesting when we look at that in terms of the temperance card, right? Um, it says that doesn't mean that the hard stuff isn't hard and of course it is but if you can find the positive side of even the worst events it will help you to stay strong and keep moving forward so it has an action so it's asking you to think about the tough times you've come through in the past and look at, back at what followed so looking back at where you've kind of overcome those challenges and and how that has brought you to where you are now. For divination, it says this card may be an indication that you are struggling with tough times or perhaps you are coming out the other side. And for magic, it says it's okay to be sad, it's okay to be happy even when things are horrible. There are two sides to every coin and no situation is black or white. Not sure that I'm getting like a magic thing out of that. Okay, so we have a little bit of a, of a maybe a magical act. So it says pour water from a fuller glass into an emptier one until they are as close to you can get them, then pour a little back. Do this a few times and when you feel that you have a sense of balance, sip a little from each glass and raise them each to the gods in thanks. So there's a little magic there that you can incorporate. Um, I do like quite like the oracle message. I don't know that you necessarily really need it with the titles on the cards and the beautiful artwork. Um, I do feel like when we kind of look at what's going on on these cards, they do work really well together, even the, though we have like this whole modern thing going on and this sort of medieval thing going on over here. So we're looking at, you know, the ups and downs of life, the happy times and the sad times. And temperance is really that card of balance, right? Of, of finding that 
kind of you're finding that balance between those two, walking those two lines between the happy times and the sad times. And this Eight of Cups here is maybe reminding us to leave behind the sad things and remember those challenges that we've come through and that it's gotten us to where we are today and that it, that is what's actually going to help us move forward as well. So I, I do like it. I think it works really well together. I do have to say I'm kind of like pleasantly surprised by how I how much I do quite like it. It's just, I'm just kind of curious now. We're just gonna do a little flip through. This is gonna be like the most ridiculously long video, but meditation to dig deep. We have the king of wands. And the seven of wands, interesting. I do feel like they work well together as a pair. Um, I have heard some people say that that wasn't their experience with it, and I will definitely have to do a little bit more work with it, but I feel like they do work quite well together. So we have the seven of swords with gratitude and thanks and the world. These two cards feel like they are very cohesive, but this one feels a little out of place. And maybe that's something that we could look into as well. You know, this is the out of place element. So maybe that's something that's drawing our attention. So really, really quite interesting. Um, I do quite like them both. I am curious to kind of work with both a little bit more in depth. Um, I do think that they work well together or that they will work quite well together. And I do feel like the Everyday Witch is, is kind of surprised to me a little bit. I like it more than I really thought I would. Um, the main thing that I was concerned about was those um, those really modern cards feeling out of place with those more medieval style cards. But when you're working with them in readings, they really don't. They didn't, or at least they didn't appear to really stand out and be really jarring. They kind of feel like they did go together quite well. And I do quite like the Oracle deck. I think the images are absolutely beautiful. I'm really curious to dive into that one a little bit more. And I do really think that the Everyday Witch is, is different enough, both of course in the art style but also in the energy and the feeling that um, these decks give me. The Green Witch Tarot, as I've often mentioned, is it feels like a deck of coming home to like old friends. This, this feels like a deck of coming home, whereas the Everyday Witch maybe feels a little bit more... Um, a little bit more practical, um, a little less sentimental. That could also just be my interpretation of it because I do have a sentimental attachment to the Green Witch Tarot, but it feels a little bit more practical, a little bit more every day. So maybe, maybe it is a thing. Maybe it like does really work. I, I really do, um, like some of them are just absolutely beautiful and the artwork is is stunning. I really do like the artwork. I like the um, that we get some diversity going on. I like that we get even more diversity in the Everyday Witch Oracle. But yeah, I'm super, super curious to really read with it, really work with it. Um, it does feel different enough. That moon card is just awesome. It does feel different enough that I don't feel like it's going to really kind of take the place of my every of my Green Witch as I move it out of the way. But I don't feel like it's going to take the place of my Green Witch. I feel like it kind of will serve its own purpose in my collection. Look at those backs. That's just kind of cute. So I do feel like it's, it's different enough from the things that I currently have that I feel like it would kind of have its own place in my collection. So I'm really curious to um, get to know it better and to work with it. I'm kind of excited about it now. Um, next step will probably be to make some bags because, right, there's got to be some really cute fabric out there. I can make bags for this. So thank you so much for joining me for this super long adventure as I kind of explore the world of the everyday witch. I would love to know what you think of either one of these decks. Do you have them? Do you work with them? What's your experience been with them? So please feel free to share with me in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.